In this video, I want to say a few words about the environments that agents inhabit. So far, when we've defined an agent, we've talked about it as being a computer system which is situated in some environment. So when we talk about an agent being situated in an environment, we mean that it's doing things, it's acting directly upon that environment. It's not disembodied from it. It's not giving advice to a person who then acts on the environment. The agent is performing actions on the environment itself. It is directly acting upon the environment. That's what we mean by situated. Uh, we've seen a couple of examples of environments so far, so let's just remind ourselves what those are. Firstly, we can think of agents as being situated in the physical world. And by the physical world, I mean the world that we all inhabit, the physical world that you and I operate in. Uh, so agents, autonomous agents that inhabit the physical world are robots, essentially. They're directly doing things to the physical world. So we can think of unmanned autonomous vehicles as being autonomous agents in, uh, in the physical world. But as well as having agents that operate in the physical world, we can think of agents that operate in virtual environments, software worlds, like um, computer operating systems, like a Unix operating system or a Windows operating system, uh, or network uh, environments where an agent is inhabiting a computer network. So we think of an agent as going through this continual sense, decide, act loop, uh, an, an agent that is inhabiting a physical environment will have sensors like infrared rangefinders and sonar which give it information about its environment. And the actions it can perform are things like moving around the environment or maybe it has some uh, uh, actuators, some manipulators to actually manipulate objects in the environment. What about software agents though? Well, imagine an agent that's in a software environment like the Unix operating system. Well, the sensors that such an agent has are things like Unix instructions like LS, which give you information about the operating system. So the Unix LS command, just all it does is it tells you the files that are in your current directory. And that action is a sensing action, it's giving you information about the environment. And there are all sorts of other Unix commands, like the PS command, which gives you information about the processors that are currently operating in, uh, in the operating system. So those actions are giving an agent information about its environment. What about the actions that a software agent can perform? Well, we can think of a, a, a Unix agent as performing actions like the RM instruction, which removes a file, or the MV, the move instruction, which moves a file from one place in the operating system to another. So those kinds of commands are the actions that a Unix agent could have to manipulate, to change its environment. And of course, those actions can succeed or fail. For example, if you try and move a file that you don't own in Unix, then the, the action will fail. You won't be allowed to do it. You can try to do it, but you won't be allowed to. So in general, then, agents can inhabit the physical world, real-world environments of various different kinds. And they could be you know, here on this planet or uh, uh, autonomous space probes, you can imagine, uh, operating on, on remote and distant planets. Uh, you can think about agents as inhabiting uh, software environments like computer operating systems and networks. Stuart Russell and Peter Norvig in their introductory AI textbook, AI and Modern Approach, suggested the following classification scheme for agents. I'm just going to go through these, these properties. So the first property of environments that they talked about was whether an environment was accessible or inaccessible. So all this means is whether or not an agent can get sufficient information from its environment in order to make the right decision. That is, whether it can get complete, accurate, up-to-date information about its environment, or at least information of sufficient quality and timeliness to make the right kind of decision. And if the answer to that question is yes, it can get that information, then we say the environment is accessible. If it can't, then we say it's inaccessible. And fairly obviously, the more accessible an environment is, the easier it's going to be for an agent to operate in that environment. The second property is determinism versus non-determinism, which is related to, but not quite the same way as the term is used in automata theory, when we talk about non-deterministic automata. When we talk about determinism uh, as respect, in respect to environments, what we mean is this. An environment is deterministic if Whenever I choose to perform an action, I know exactly what the outcome of that action is going to be. There is a single outcome to that action, and I know exactly what it's going to be. 
If an environment is non-deterministic, then what that means is that performing the same action, there are multiple possible outcomes to that action, and I don't know which of those is going to result. So it's the same action, but multiple possible outcomes, and I don't know which one will actually happen. Uh, so clearly, the more deterministic an environment is, the easier it's going to be, in general, for an agent to operate in that environment. The more non-deterministic it is, the more unpredictable it is, in some sense, the harder it's going to be for an agent to operate in it. Episodic versus non-episodic. Well, this really relates to the kinds of tasks that an agent carries out in an environment. And what episodic means is the following. An environment or task in an environment is episodic if it's, if it's constructed of a series of discrete Episode. So there's an episode here where the agent has some subtask to perform, and then an episode over here where it has another subtask, and these two things don't interfere with one another. That is, if you fail here or succeed here, it doesn't affect whether or not you fail or succeed over here. If, in contrast, what you do over here affects your ability to succeed over here, or later on when you're carrying out other tasks, then we say the environment is non-episodic. So in an episodic environment, or task carried out in an uh, environment, uh, we, what happens is we carry out the task in a number of discrete episodes which don't interfere with one another. Okay. And in general, episodic is easier than non-episodic, broadly speaking, because in, in an episodic environment, you don't have to worry about how the actions that you perform now are going to interfere with what you do in the future. And then static versus dynamic is the final part of the classification. So intuitively, an environment is static if you are the only person that's operating on that environment. If the only way that things can change is by the actions that you perform. In that case, you say uh, the environment is static. And again, the point is, if the environment is static, then it's essentially predictable. You know it's only going to change as a result of your actions. A dynamic environment is one where there are multiple processes or multiple agents operating within the environment. Things can change uh, in ways beyond your control. You don't know exactly how the environment is going to be tomorrow. So I tend to use the following sort of slogan to summarise this. A static environment is one where your keys are always where you left them. In a dynamic environment, somebody else can come in and pick up and move your keys and the next morning you can't find them. So, to summarise, in general, we have environments that could be, for example, the physical world environment, in which we have robots that are operating on the environment, but they could also be virtual environments, operating systems, computer networks. And then we've got this classification scheme of environments, accessible versus inaccessible, relating to the information that you get about the environment, or can get about the environment, where accessible, roughly speaking, is easier. Deterministic versus non-deterministic, whether or not you know the actions uh, will have a single effect or whether there are multiple possible effects of an action. Episodic versus non-episodic, whether or not you have to worry about how the actions that you perform now will interfere with the actions you can perform in the future. And finally, static versus dynamic, whether or not you are the only actor in an environment or whether there are other processes, other agents operating upon that environment.